I stopped. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dan, I love hiking, and I love backpacking, and I love gear. If you guys like that stuff too, would you consider subscribing to the channel? Uh, that's what the channel's all about. So today, we're gonna talk a little bit about why I stopped ultralight backpacking. I got into backpacking around 2015, and I was instantly addicted. Uh, it was something I researched constantly. I watched every YouTube video imaginable. I went to every website imaginable. I checked out every company you can think of, and instantly my goal was just to buy gear that I could afford and I did that and then my goal was to rebuy gear and buy the lightest stuff I could possibly find and for me like the number one thing for me was how much does an item weigh so before I even considered what it could do and how it was made I was more concerned with the weight and I made big mistakes starting out. I had miserable nights, I had miserable days, and it didn't do what I needed it to do for the style of backpacking that I backpack. A couple weeks ago I posted a video called How to Pack the Right Amount of Weight, and I'll put a link to it right here for you guys so you can check that out. And I think it's a great tool for you guys who um, just don't exactly know how much weight you should be carrying on your trip. And I give some pretty good tips in there to try to help you guys out. But I wanna just tell you that what I'm doing today is admitting that I am not an ultralight backpacker by any means whatsoever. Now that doesn't mean that I think that weight is important. I think weight is extremely important. I think it's definitely like in the top few reasons that you should definitely consider when you're buying gear but I don't think it's the end-all be-all now in the video that I put out a couple weeks ago I talked about the different types of backpacking and why different types of weight are important but today I want to talk to you a little bit about the specific gear that I brought out to show you today and why I think it's worth the extra weight so this was my very first sleep pad it's a Walmart roll of foam you know like my kids have slept out in the backyard that kind of thing um, but I've kept it around for that reason but it's eight ounces. Some of you guys are like, man, that's perfect. That's exactly what I use and I'm really comfortable doing it. That's great. It doesn't work for me. Every through hiker pretty much is gonna tell you the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite is the best pad. So those guys are constantly traveling. Um, they're day in and day out. They're four to six months or longer, uh, hiking huge long trails. And so every ounce counts in that situation. But this pad doesn't work for me. It's way too narrow. It's like 20 inches wide and I roll around at night so I fall off. So then I upgraded to the Nemo Tensor regular wide pad. I just got this pad, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago and it has literally revolutionized tent camping for me, tent backpacking. I'm about now 50% tenting and 50% hammocking. I was only hammocking. I thought hammocking was the way to go but this pad is changing the way I think about tents. I sleep as well on this as I do in my hammock. And some of you guys are already like ready to click off of this video. You're like, there's no way I'm gonna take a pad that's 19 ounces, Dan. That's absolutely insane. Why would you do that? Well, because it gives me the sleep that I need to be able to hike the next day. And I'm a weekend backpacker. I'm not a through hiker. I'm not a section hiker. I usually go for two to three days max. Every once in a while, I'll do four days, but those are bigger trips in the year but I've got a lot of other obligation in my life that I just can't do more than weekend trips. So it's okay for me to bring a pad that's 19 ounces, especially if it's gonna help me sleep at night and as comfortable as this pad is. I was claustrophobic in hammocks, so um, I found out that the Warbonnet Ridge Runner hammock, which is a bridge hammock, which means it's like a stretcher, it's got bars at the ends that go across the top of your head and the bottom of your feet that open up the hammock, was an easier hammock to sleep in for people who were claustrophobic. It is also extremely comfortable. It's kind of like laying in a stretcher. You can almost lay on your stomach in it. It's a fairly lightweight hammock. And the problem is you gotta bring spreader bars or you gotta use trekking poles or something. So it's extra weight to bring this hammock, but 
I love sleeping in it. Then I went out and bought a gathered end hammock because I thought I was pretty much cured of hammock claustrophobia. Plus I wanted other gear for other people to use. And I ended up buying the Warbonnet Blackbird hammock, which is also an awesome hammock, but I don't use it as much. I don't sleep as good in it. Um, I sleep okay in it. I mean, it's not bad, but I'd much rather sleep in the Ridge Runner. So this is a hammock that I keep around for guys that want to come with me. Let's talk tents for a second. I also have this MSR through hiker mesh house three tent with the MSR through hiker wing 100 tent. It's just an A-frame mesh tent and a tarp that goes over the top of it. This whole setup weighs two pounds. I got the three person because I bring kids with me. So it's important that I have more room in shelters. So I could use this, but there's certain times where I want a little more privacy. This thing has wide open ends. There's certain times when it's colder out. So I need something a little bit warmer. In the summer, when it's gonna be much warmer, and if I decide to go backpack in the summer, I'll probably take something along these lines. I also have been using the Big Agnes Tiger Wall 210. This is like eight ounces heavier than the Mesh House 3, and I'm totally fine with that. I don't even have carbon fiber or titanium stakes that I take with this tent. I just use the stakes that came with it because I think they're good enough, they're light enough for what I'm doing. It doesn't bother me. It's not that big of a deal for me to go digging to save a half an ounce in stakes when I'm just going for the weekend. Let's talk about camp chairs for a second. I had a ton of people comment on camp chairs. Some people love them, some people hate them. Some of you guys use those Z seats. You could be using this. I could say to you, you could be using this. This is the Dutchware sit pad. This weighs 0.7 ounces and will pretty much do the exact same thing as your Z seat. So why aren't you buying this? You could be saving an extra two ounces, but you're not. So you're a terrible backpacker, right? Wrong. You take that Z-Lite because you like it. You take that Z-Lite because it fits your needs and because a ton of other people told you to buy it. So that's what you bought. And that's totally fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But even that's not super comfortable for me. So I could be taking this tiny little stool that only weighs 10 ounces without the stuff sack. But instead, I chose for the Helinox Chair Zero, which weighs about one pound of extra weight just so I can have some place to sit when I get to camp. Is a through hiker gonna take a chair? Probably not. I don't know too many through hikers out there right now that are using chairs. And there's plenty of good reasons for that. But for me, a weekend backpacker, taking shorter hikes, hiking with my kids, I'm just not ultralight backpacking. I've got this Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt and I've talked about this in other videos. It's a really good quilt. It weighs a little bit over 19 ounces, which is fantastic. It's a 20 degree quilt. But this is a quilt that I'm never ever gonna take tent camping again because it doesn't cover me well enough. It's just not big enough. And I could save the weight and I could just, you know, suffer through the night and get over it and then I'll feel great that I was ultralight backpacking. But it just doesn't work for me in a tent. There's another company out there called Underground Quilts that is a excellent company and honestly, I don't think they get enough credit. I don't think that people know enough about them and I wanna tell you about them because they're fantastic. They sent me this quilt. It's 20 degree quilt as well. It's easily as nice and as well made as the Enlightened Equipment quilt. It's wider. I had them specifically make it wider for me, but it fits me much better in a tent. So this is something I would use in a tent. Now, this thing weighs a little bit more, but for me to be comfortable, it's totally worth it. And this quilt is actually less expensive than the Enlightened Equipment quilt. I will be doing a separate video completely about this quilt, so definitely look out for that. Another company that's out there, Outdoor Vitals. So Outdoor Vitals contacted me, I don't know, maybe a month and a half, two months ago, and decided they wanted to send me some stuff. They sent to me their 15 degree Stormloft quilt, and as soon as I pulled it out of the package, I was instantly blown away at the quality of this quilt. This quilt is a 15 degree quilt, but it weighs 27 ounces. It is a much larger quilt than I'm used to. It is definitely gonna cover somebody who's tall. I slept with this in a tent and it did great. So I was okay with carrying that little bit of extra weight. So if you're kind of wondering what may be like a rule of thumb to kind of help you guys decide at what point you should be carrying extra gear, like how many areas of my gear system can be over what is the typical weight people tend to carry, I would say look at the big three, which is gonna be your shelter, your sleep system, and your backpack. Those are honestly some areas that you can get pretty ultra light, you can get really low on the weight and still be comfortable. I made a video about this and I will also link that right here if you wanna check that out to maybe give you some ideas and some thoughts. 
Um, it can be really expensive to do that. There are cheaper alternatives out there, but just know that that may be a starting point. So once you dial those big things down, the other things, man, you can kind of supplement a little bit and just carry a little bit heavier stuff or whatever makes you comfortable. Maybe that'll help you guys out as well. Hey, my outro didn't save when I went to edit my video. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe for more and hit the bell notification so I can send you a video every time it's released. And I'll see you on the next one.